Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I see people populating our room here now. Um, we apologize for the short delay. We are working through some tech stuff on the back end, so I definitely appreciate your patience. Um, if you want to take a second to go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat box, um, make sure that where you put two, you put all um, panelists and attendees so that we all can see who's here. Just put your name and the name of your program that you're from. Um, I'm also going to start, start a quick poll on the screen so we can get a snapshot of who and what role is here. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that now. If you can go ahead and take the poll. Wow, great. Whoa, that was quick. Nice. Awesome. All right, so. Looks like we have a, a, a great mix, instructional specialists, ESL instructors, AV instructors, and then a few others. So that's fabulous. Um, thank you so much for taking that. Um, if we haven't already met, my name is Gina Davis. I am the uh, professional learning coordinator with the Team Labor. Um, we're really, really excited to have Deborah here from Cecil College. She's going to be walking us through her session, Lesson Plan Activities to Build Soft Skills. Um, so without further ado, Deborah, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so I see by the, um, the poll that you took who's on, this is, this is exactly for you. Um, and for everyone that we have on. And I'm seeing the number of people on, so no pressure. This is my first time of doing this, so um, just bear with me. All right, so the first thing that we wanna, um, I wanna introduce you to is the lesson plan activities to build soft skills. And thank you for um, um, introducing yourself in the, the chat box. And I saw, like, I, I've met all of you, so um, good morning on this uh, Monday morning. I don't know if you had to know where you are, but we did here today. All right, so our objectives um, is to identify some soft skills and to explore ways to embed building soft skills into your academic lessons. Um, we have a lot to cover already and uh, with WIOA, um, it's already been around for a while, uh, so we're already accustomed to trying to start to build some of the job skills, um, but our lesson today is going to focus on um, the soft skills and what that means is not necessarily the detailed skills that it takes to be a nurse like math for nurses or um, anything like that but soft skills um, are some of the skills that employers want they're saying that they want soft skills they don't want just someone to be able to um, run a machine or program a computer but they want um, soft skills so it's really important for us to understand what they are and how we can put them into um, our lesson plans. So we just want to make some modifications and not necessarily rewrite anything. We don't have any more time to add things, so we have to modify what we do. So first, what are soft skills? Um, Indeed defines soft skills as any skill that can be classified as a personality trait or a habit. So interpersonal skills and communication skills, those are more specific to um, types of soft skills that many employers are looking for in job candidates today and employees. Okay. Oops, sorry. All right. So why do we want to embed them into our lesson plan? Well, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act um, says that we need to prepare potential employees with job skills, um, you know, or um, if they want to move on um, to continue to train for careers, these soft skills also um, help if they're continuing their education, right? So employers are seeking employees with technical knowledge and soft skills. So they want a nurse or scientist that knows how to do the duties of being a nurse or scientist, but also have those soft skills um, that makes them more rounded and basically someone that you can work with, right? Also, students will gain skills that they can adapt in different work settings. So soft skills are skills that um, 
are flexible and movable. So if I have certain soft skills, I'm going to be able to apply or transfer those particular skills regardless of which job I go into, which makes it easy for you as the instructor because you are building the soft skills that will actually apply in different um, areas or different careers. So some of the desirable soft skills that I found, and I'm gonna identify 10 of them and I'm going to um, um, define them. Um, so we do have them here and I'll leave them up for you um, for a few minutes. Um, so teamwork. Teamwork is the process of working collaborative, collaboratively with a group of people to achieve a goal. Um, it's very crucial in any business and it's necessary for colleagues to work together and um, try in their best in any circumstances. And they have to work together because we, we're not working in silos anymore. So we have to have teamwork and um, things overlap. Uh, collaboration, cooperative arrangement in which two or more parties that may or may not have had a previous relationship um, work together towards a common goal. Whenever you start working somewhere, you usually don't know, um, you might know one or two people, but you usually don't know people that you are starting to work with. And it's really important to be able to um, collaborate with someone that you have not even had a chance to build a relationship with yet. Flexibility um, on the job that includes willingness and ability to respond to changing circumstances and expectations readily. So by definition, flexibility means to the ability to bend or adapt um, to changing forces. Um, so are you able to start working on something and then you find out that afternoon something has to change or there was a new poll came in and you have to change something. Um, and effective communication. Um, effective communication is a two-way information sharing process which involves one party sending a message that's easily understood by the receiving party. So basically, are you able to say what you mean and do others understand the way that you want them to, what you're saying? Okay. Creative thinking. Um, this is looking at problems or situations in a different way or from a fresh perspective. That suggests sometimes unorthodox solutions um which may be unsettling or may not be unsettling um basically creative thinking can be stimulated both by unstructured process such as brainstorming or a structured process such as lateral thinking so the ability to come up with solutions um can you do that and that's what employers are looking for can you come up with a solution to something that is a problem on the job confidence a feeling of trust in one's abilities, qualities, and judgment. Knowing what you know. Do you know what you know and do you feel confident enough um, to express it? Organizational skills are skills that you use to organize your workload. Um, I'm sorry, I missed time management. I'll come back to that. Um, so managing your time and resources and scheduling and prioritizing your projects. Do you have the ability to do that? Um, time management is the systematic and priority-based structuring of time allocation, um, and you have a lot to do. Do you know how to organize your time in order to accomplish all that you have? And reliability is the quality of being trustworthy or performing consistently well. And can others, basically can others count on you? Okay. And then problem solving is the process of working through details of a problem to reach a solution. It may include mathematical or systematic operations, and it can be engaged to someone's um, critical thinking skills. It goes hand in hand with critical thinking. Um, so. I'm sorry, creative thinking. So creative thinking, critical thinking, problem solving, those go together. And can we, um, can we do that? So real quick, what I'd like to do is take an opinion poll of the 10 skills, we go back to teamwork, to the problem solving. Of those 10 skills, 
what do you see as maybe the most important of those? Are there any that you see that if you have this one, some of the other ones will fall in place? So if you want to take just a minute in your chat box, um, what skill do you feel is the most important of the 10? What would you say is number one? Okay, okay. <laughs> There's a lot coming in. I am seeing problem solving actually come up um, quite a bit there. Um, reliability, yes. Um, creative thinking that goes in hand, hand in hand with problem solving. And that's what I seem to be seeing the most of is problem solving. Okay. Yeah, the ones that, that I'm seeing the most, it looks like problem solving. I saw, um, let's see, I can go back through here, can I? Uh, creative thinking. Um, communication. Um, so those seem to look like the top three. And based on the research that I was doing, the problem solving, um, time um, communication, um, those did come, those did rise to the top. Uh, the communication and the problem solving actually were the ones that were kind of on the top when I was doing the research for this. So um, that is very important and good. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, so with this information, what about the lesson plan? So that's where we're ultimately today. With all of this information that I gave you, there's, you know, what are we going to do with our lesson plan? How are we going to get this information to students? Because I actually teach um, uh, language arts right now, uh, and it can be overwhelming because I look at the information that they're going to need to know for the test. I look at the information that maybe they're deficient and I need to bring them up. And it's like, how can I add something else? to my, you know, three to six hours um, that I, well, three hours that I have them a week. And, you know, how am I going to do that? Well, I don't have to change my lesson plans. And that's where we're looking at today. It's not as actually necessary to add a whole lot. It's just how are we going to approach it? So you see the two pictures here. You have the one um, person on the side, you have the instructor standing and she's giving the information and she's lecturing and she has all this information on the board. But look at the next picture where you have the students involved. And I think that that's what it comes down to is involvement of the students in the material more so than changing what you're doing. It's, it's changing how you present it. So if we look at the next slide here, um, ways the material can be presented to build soft skills. So let's look at, and I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to go through a couple, but let's look at teamwork and collaboration. Here's an idea. Group or pair of students to discuss reading passages where they can help each other. For instance, I've done this in, in, a, in class before, and it worked really well. I was surprised. You give them one of the extended response prompts and the reading that goes along with the extended response um, material, the, the two articles you have them paired or in groups and have them read through it where they're actually breaking it down. They're assigning like, you do this part, you do this part, pick out the main points. And that gets them working together and collaborating with each other. And you'd be surprised how slow they start. And by the end, you're like, okay, let's stop, let's stop. They just keep going with it. Um, flexibility. Working in groups and pairs helps build that skill. So you're also asking questions of the groups and asking them to give a report out. So you might give them a project or something to work on, whether it's math or um, social studies, language arts, and then you're asking them specific questions. You're asking them to report out what did they find. Um, 
the other thing that you can do is you can structure it so that you're giving them a piece of it. You have them start working on it. And then halfway through, you're like, okay, I'm going to add something. And then they have to build that in. And that actually helps them build flexibility um, because you've stopped them. And now they have to work something else in. Time management. Um, you can structure your activities. And, you know, we'll, you can say, we're going to have five minutes to do this or we're going to have 20 minutes to do this. And you, you give them a project and you keep firm to that. Um, and then you can ask them how they approached the activity so that they could finish in time, um, what they could have done differently. Also, you could ask if they didn't finish, how did it make them feel? Or if they did finish, how did it make them feel? You can reflect on that and then you say, okay, next time, what would you do differently? And that helps them start to build that skill and really think about what they're doing. And in the same time, you're getting your academic piece um, that you know that they need for the test, but then they're also building these other skills and being able to make changes on the fly, which is really important in um, when they get a job. Problem solving and critical thinking. Um, give them scenarios that there's no particular answer to, or it's not clearly stated in the material or the resources that you provided, and you have them work together. You have them try to figure it out. Um, and, and this is where you can have a forum like you would have at work where there's like their, their think tank and they can um, brainstorm and they can do different things to solve a particular problem or what they think might be the answer to an academic um, problem that you've given them. So what you're doing is you're molding it together, the academic with these particular skills. Right. Material, um, ways material can be presented to build soft skills for computer work. Um, so if you're working on the computer that builds research skills, you can give them particular projects. You can do, um, it builds overall computer skills for on the job. If you're having them write um, sentences or you're having them write a paragraph, have them actually write it in Word on the computer. Show them how to cut and paste. And then you're actually building those computer skills as well. Um, have them write emails, um, you know, to respond to particular business writing that you might be doing in an RLA class. Um, communication and confidence. Give students a topic to work on where they research the topic and have them build a PowerPoint presentation um, and present that to the class, make it job related. What career are they interested in and have them research the career, um, the jobs that are available in the area, how much they can expect to make, why they're interested in it. Um, and just a you know three, four um, slide PowerPoint to get introduced to those particular um, computer programs, but then that's also going to build their communication and their confidence because you're going to have them present it to the class and um, that helps build the, that uh, public speaking uh, piece and talking in front of others. Um, so at the end of these group projects, it's very important that you debrief students um, and ask them pointed questions to help them understand the skills that they were just engaging in so that they can connect the dots. Um, ask some questions like, um, was there one person that became the natural leader and why do you think that is? Um, how do you approach, how did you approach the problem? Did you associate any of your past experiences with that task? How did you feel um, working with others? And is there anything that they would do differently and that helps them reflect? So real quick, and I know um, time, is of the essence and we actually are about finished. I'll go through the rest of this probably in about five minutes. So real quick though, there is a quick thing. Has anyone, I know that we've all done the marshmallow challenge as, um, as leaders um, or instructors. We've probably done something in one of our um, um, professional development. But if you could tell me, has anyone used the marshmallow challenge um, or anything like it to help build um, skills in the classroom. 
because the marshmallow challenge actually builds communication, flexibility, teamwork, collaboration, um, and you can pick something related to science or take a reading passage and ask the group to come up with a review report covering specific details also. Um, but has anyone done the marshmallow challenge or anything like that in their classrooms? It's where you take spaghetti. Now someone says that they're, they're looking up. It's where you take um, spaghetti, string, tape, and a marshmallow, and the team has to work together to build the highest tower with the marshmallow on top. It's something fun that you can, okay, so I see that um, it's most, okay, people have done role play. One person has done the marshmallow challenge before, not in the classroom, okay. I actually did a soft skills um, with a class one time and, and talked about these same soft skills with them that is, is needed. Um, it wasn't in the um, RLA or the math class, but you can actually use this and then the questions that you ask them after about who was the natural leader and have them reflect on the kinds of things that they were doing um, and you, you know, you just, that is something that you do have to add. You take it out 20, 25 minutes out of, out of a classroom, but it helps them start to understand how they need to work together. And you could actually use that either in the middle of you, um, trying to, you know, start working with students to build particular skills, but it really, um, it is really something good to bring them, um, together and to understand that, you know, I'm going to have to work with people. Um, and I need to be able to build those skills in doing that. So it is something that um, you might want to try, or you can look something up. Um, cool TED Talk about it if you. Oh, okay, and thank you, um, Gina. She put in a cool, cool TED Talk um, about the marshmallow challenge. So thank you. That would be um, something that you could look up as well. Um, and let's move on. So. What I've done is I have reviewed um, some of the teaching models and methods, and I found the REACT model um, actually most closely relates to the material that I presented today for activities that supports building soft skills in the classroom. Um, so let's look at that description. So the R, you want to relate. Relating is a process of connecting the material with learners' experiences. We have adult learners. We have to connect their experiences. Um, because they want to know how how's this how's this relate to what I already know. Experience carrying out the material in the classroom um, in an attempt to give hands-on experience. So you're not only telling them that they need to communicate, but you're giving them activities where they have to um, apply. Giving students opportunity to learn, putting concepts um, to use in real activity. So they're applying the knowledge. Cooperate is learning in the context of sharing, responding, and communicating with other students. So you're doing that in some of these activities that I, I've given you today. Um, and you, you'll have, there's a lot more. Um, of course, I can only do a couple. And then transfer, learning in the context of taking existing knowledge or using and building upon it what the student has already learned. Okay. So we only have like a minute left. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to think about contextualized instruction and integrating soft skill building into the academic lessons. What are some of the tech, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have you do this in the chat box for now for the sake of time. Um, what are some of the techniques that you've used um, in your classroom that does this? We're, we're not gonna have time to do the, um, do the whole you know team activity that I have here but in the chat box if you could just say how many or what kinds of things you've done okay okay jigsaw reading the project with the PowerPoint that's good
Okay, so it looks like you do actually have some um, things that you are doing in your classrooms. And I think today the uh, most important thing was to identify those soft skills that we need to build. And then by taking those and then coming up with some activities that we can use. And it's again, it's not changing or, or it's not adding anything to what you need to do, just changing your delivery so that we're building those skills. But then just taking that minute to reflect with your students so they understand what skills that they were, you know, engaged in building at that point. Um, so that is all that I have today. Thank you very much. And I don't think we have a whole lot of time for questions. Um, no, thank you so much, Deborah. This has been wonderful. A great um, snippet to get us exposed to what soft skills are and some ideas on how to integrate them into lesson planning. So that's wonderful. Um, I have put a survey in the chat box. If you guys can take a moment, it takes less than a minute to fill it out and just let us know how it went today. You know, um, they're anonymous survey, so feel free to give us any feedback so that way we can make sure we have more sessions like this or, um, you know, how we can tweak it next year if we'd like to do this in the future. But thank you everyone for participating. All of the presentations as well as the recordings and resources, handouts, etc. will be available on the Virtual Training Institute web, um, website. Um, I'll do that as soon as I have the ability to put them all up there. Um, but I thank you all for joining us this morning and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.